Hi, I'm The Rap Critic, and this video was requested by William Elman. And if you'd like to request a song for me to review, plus get other goodies, go to my Patreon for more info. So let's talk about how this request turned me into a Diggable Planets fan. As you all may know, they made a song called Rebirth of Slick, cool like that. And man were they ever. If someone were to ask you what the definition of slick is, you could either define it as smooth and glossy or ingenious and cleverly devised, or you could just play this dope ass hook. We beat to rap what key beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. Even 24 years later, is this any less cool than it was at the time? I mean, a lot of stuff from the past gets played out over time, like Kwame and them fucking polka dots. But this? Nah, this never got played out. Just their wording and imagery, the way they frame hip-hop as the new jazz in a way that makes you believe it. I mean, hip-hop is the new cool now, and maybe mainstream culture didn't see it then, and it was a niche genre, but it is completely inescapable now. You see it all over the world. You see it's fused into rock, funk, freaking K-pop, much in the same way jazz has stretched its influence from American classically composed art song to goddamn Chinese folk music. And as well, while the song was about hip-hop in general, the mellow styles of diggable planets consisting of Butterfly, Doodlebug, and Ladybug Mecca solidified themselves as the ultimate in cool that didn't need to prove itself. Starting with the sample, which is using Stretchin' by Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers. Which kind of explains their album title. You know, the original title is called Stretchin' and this album's called Reachin'. A uh, new refutation of time and space. But yeah, it took something so manic and fast-paced and chilled it out and slowed it down. Taking two small motifs from the overall piece and stretching them out for their own song. And just listen to their voices and choice of words. We like the breeze, flow straight out of our lips. Them, they got boo bodies, have our Brooklyn kids. See, here he's illustrating how the lyrics just flow from their minds as easy as a breeze. But then he seems to switch the perspective to becoming detached to the situation. Us floor rush when they DJ boom and classics. You the crew on the fattest hip hop record. And again, there's that change in perspective that keeps happening. He flips it again to being about us, him included, and how they're hitting the dance floor when a dope classic comes on. But then he switches the perspective again to you specifically, and how you're hip to the best music and what it is when it comes on. What is happening here? Why is he... Wait, play the first couple of seconds of each line? We like the breeze, them, they got boo. He touched the kinks, our funk zoom. Hey, every line starts with a different pronoun. I never noticed that before. Yeah, it starts with a pronoun and proceeds with a similar flow for each line, like da 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 da. Huh? Maybe that's what made it catchy for people. It's just this subtle pattern that listeners picked up on. Wait, does that happen in the second and third verse too? We be the chocolate, she innovates. We get your feet, them thug the jams. Holy crap! Yeah, but wait, I remember it changing at some point. We freaks the clips with mad mouth percussion. Where kinky hair goes the unthought of dimensions. Yeah, see, it changes to... Wait, play a few more lyrics? Why is it so fly? Cause hip-hop kept some drama. When butterfly rock the lightning sway famous. He's using the six question words here, isn't he? Uh, wait, do the other ones do that too? What? I just flip that board and get loose. How to consume all the beaches like juice. Yeah. How did I not notice this before? I mean, the guy in the third verse kind of drops it. Which would have been nice if they carried on with the full consistency, but, you know, whatever. But yeah, something about the elementary kind of flow with how they infuse jazz themes with rap music, framing this song as hip-hop springing forth as a direct permutation of jazz, and its sound still finding root in the old sound of jazz while branching out into this strange new world called hip-hop. But yeah, in this song it's sort of a mythical recreation by reassociation with an older genre. And through them changing perspectives the way they do, it's like a camera panning to different parts of this life and its reality. Zooming in and out and around the whole hip-hop scene. Us, we be freaking till dawn, peace and I. He gets a stranger smile, so I say hi. What's up? You know, now that I think about it, these guys were kind of like a perfect marriage between A Tribe Called Quest's style and aesthetic and Wu-Tang Clan's mysticism and imagery. In fact, I feel it's weird to compare A Tribe Called Quest to a band that barely stuck together for two albums while Tribe came out first and had a much longer and respected discography, but honestly, I prefer Diggable Planets to Tribe. Where A Tribe Called Quest always sounded like they were two normal guys rapping over jazz beats, Diggable Planets sounded like they were straight out of the beat poetry club, as if their very voices arose from the fabric of this atmosphere. The chocolate taps on my raps. She innovates at the sweet of cat naps. I love how she has this imagery of her group being like a faucet where chocolate comes out instead of water. As a metaphor for them being producers of black culture. And then following it up by saying, I come up with tons of varied and innovative styles right after a mid-morning siesta. Because, you know, making awesomeness look so effortless can be tiring for such masters of skill. 
Also, I love how Ladybug was completely cognizant of the fact that lifting this sample would inevitably make a timeless record. If it's a shit, we we'll lift it off the plastic. The babes will go spastic. Hip hop is a classic. Although I will say, the one thing that's always confused me is this part. Blank, 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 blank. Why are they just saying blank? But apparently, this is an homage to the Last Poets, a slam poetry group from the seventies. <laughs> But now I'm not sure why he's saying blink. Are they just two guys on a subway excessively blinking at each other? But you know, that's beat poetry. It's gonna be weird and abstract like that. Overall, I give this song a 5 out of 5. It's a fantastic joint that has undoubtedly stood the test of time. Unfortunately, there were no big hits to follow when the band broke up. But not like a Beatles, we hate each other and are on way too many drugs sort of thing. No. Unfortunately, Ladybug's parents passed away right after they won their Grammy, and just differences in ideological paths led them to just parting ways. In fact, they started touring again last year, and judging from interviews, they seemed like there's no bad blood between each other. It legit sounded like they were just like, oh, you want to do this other thing? Yeah, okay, I don't think anyone will miss us anyway. Which is funny, because they've apparently got a cult following. Despite their first album being the one with the big hit single, it's actually the second one that gets the most praise. And since they've been touring, according to them, they've been pulling in crowds by the thousands. And to me, it's well earned. I checked out their albums, and I like how they were so different. That the first was simple in rhyme structure, but had intriguing ideas and concepts, while their second was darker and more dense. I wish they would have made more, but I'd hate it if they were pressured to create something they couldn't match up to these two. And it's not like they need to. Maybe if they only made one album, I'd be disappointed. But if you can give us two that are varied and interesting, I can't complain. And if you, like me, for the longest time have only heard Cool Like That and didn't think they had much more to offer, I'm here to tell you that there are two more hours worth of music that you need to have in your life. Well, I'm the Rap Critic, and I'm peace like that. Yeah.